Well, with us we have uh, Rick Shanklin with the uh, National Weather Service out of Paducah, Kentucky. And uh, Rick, I want to say thanks for uh, for being on the program and uh, talking with us at ClarksvilleNow.com. And a little bit about some of the weather, especially this uh, severe weather season we've had so far. And uh, other aspects of it, as far as, uh, you know, winds and storms and maybe even tornadoes, how bad has it been? It's been uh, very active, uh, although other than the flooding, it has not been, I would say, unusually active. Uh, in our region that we cover, our office covers uh, parts of four states, uh, we've had uh, six tornadoes so far this spring. We probably average about six to eight you know, through this period of each spring. Uh, we've not had anything higher than an EF2, which is a strong category tornado. One of those was nearby uh, in northern Christian County. Okay, let's talk about watches and warnings. I think a lot of people know, but let's remind them. What is the difference, say, between a uh, tornado watch and a tornado warning, as well as a thunderstorm watch and a thunderstorm warning? A watch means that it's time to, uh, to you know, stay on top of the weather, that conditions are favorable for that weather event to happen. doesn't mean it's happening at all. It, during a watch scenario, the skies could be clearer over a whole area not even a storm around, but in the next few hours we expect severe weather to develop and that's why the watch is in effect. A warning on the other hand means the storm is already there, uh, it's producing severe weather, we know that from the storm spotters or we know that it is very likely based on the radar signatures we're seeing, uh, so it is time to take action if a warning is issued. Now, Rick, it feels like we've had a pretty active, uh, you know, spring as far as the uh, weather goes. But now, what about the summer? You know, what is the outlook for, say, late spring as we get into summer? Well, you know, we're seeing a little bit of a transition toward uh, summer. Uh, uh, in the days ahead, we expect it to, to be warmer and, and a little more uh, of a calm period uh, with, without any big storms, uh, uh, at least a little break from them. Uh, but we'll get into more of that. Uh, overall, though, the next two to three months into the summer, we expect uh, a pretty typical period uh, with near normal temperatures, near, near normal rainfall. So that's the good news, especially for the, uh, the areas with the ground saturated and all the rain we've had. Uh, but what we do know that's pretty consistent in our region is our tornado threat remains pretty high through the month of May, through about the first half of June or so, and then it starts uh, going down fairly steadily. But as it goes down, actually the damaging non-tornadic thunderstorm wind threat typically kind of goes up through the summer. So we still have that uh, to be concerned with, and we don't see any reason that's going to be any different than usual. And then, of course, as we get into the summer, we have the heat. Uh, of concern as well. Uh, and we've had several downbursts, including one right here in the Clarksville area uh, that hit, uh, I think that was April 24th storm uh, moved through the area, major downburst, a swath of wind damage uh, a couple miles wide uh, with that, uh, lots of trees down, some damage to some homes. Uh, so that's another big concern. We've had a couple of those and we've had some uh, large hail events as well. What causes hail to be so large? You hear about pea size and of course golf ball size and even tennis ball size hail. So what about that? Well, first off you have to have an atmosphere that is very unstable. Uh, relatively speaking, warm air at the ground and that, that creates very strong thunderstorm updrafts, we call them, upward air currents in the thunderstorm. If those updrafts are strong enough, that can keep those hail uh, uh, particles up in the storm and they will continue to grow. And besides that, sometimes they'll actually cycle up, they'll get caught in, they'll stay in the updraft, they'll get spit out just a little bit to the side, come down, then get caught in the updraft again. Some hailstones you can actually cut uh, cross-section of and you can see the different layers where it's gone up and down in the thunderstorm of draft and down uh, draft time after time. So the longer it's up in the thunderstorm, bottom line, the larger the hail gets and it takes a very strong thunderstorm environment to produce that large hail. I'll tell you what, I've got a question here about uh, being a meteorologist. What exactly does it take? What's the training you need to have to be a, to be a meteorologist? And I guess what prompted you to want to get into the, uh, into the weather business? Well, the training, you simply go to a college that offers a four-year degree in atmospheric science or meteorology, and there's really not a lot of those around, although there are a lot more now than there used to be, but, uh, you know, I've been interested in it for a long time. My grandfather, Lindsey Shanklin, got me really uh, interested in the weather at a young age. Then we had a tornado in 1978, 
did our farm, took away my tobacco barn, and that was kind of the icing on the cake. And I said, you know, I'm going to try to get into this field. It's a natural interest, and I did. For being on our community corner and just sharing with us all this great information about the weather. And as I mentioned earlier, the weather affects everybody. So uh, thank you. My pleasure. You're very welcome.